welcome to Frontier Wrestling as we see what went down on last week's FWA TV show. Alex Shane was facing Drew McDonald in a vicious match that went back and forth and saw Alex Shane tumble off the balcony of the arena. He was then attacked by Robbie Brookside and the rest of the old school. His head of security, Mr. Blonde, coming to Alex's rescue. But no, Mr. Blonde and Alex's hand-picked security team also attacked him. They shanghaied him. They pearl harbored him. It was a six-on-one attack. Alex Shane at the mercy of Mr. Blonde, his security team, Drew McDonald, and the rest of the old school. It looked very, very bad for Alex Shane, and things got even worse because Drew McDonald pulled out a petrol can. He doused Alex Shane with every intention of burning him until Scott Parker and the rest of the new school made the save. This one isn't over, it's just starting. Listen, great job, great job. It warms my heart to have you by the side of the dumb D. It really does. Not a problem. Now news from the camp. The spies in there tell us while the new school was blaming their sorrows, it was your name on their tongue. Mm. Venus Veritas, my friend, in Venus Veritas. They must hate you very much. But good, good feel. Let them hate you. Let the people hate you. Let all the loose go hate you. And most of all, let Alex Shane himself hate you. Because as a philosopher once said, let them hate so long as they fear, my friend. So long as they fear. They fear me. Cruz going 
for a break on the outside. He's going for a breather. He needs it because Aid is looking good at this point. Crew's calling for a timeout. There are no timeouts in wrestling. Referee Andrew Coyne explaining exactly that to Cruz. Cruz just needs, just needs that extra bit of time to gather his thoughts, to regain his composure, because he's up against Hayde Vanson here. Hayde Vanson doesn't have any kind of record in the FWA. This is, this is really his debut. We've seen him a couple of times before in and around the scenes, but this is his first in-ring match. Will that inexperience tell? We'll find out soon enough. Off the road for a shoulder block from Vatson. Cruz ducks and leaps over. He's waiting with a hip toss. Vatson lands on his feet though. It's a hip toss reversal. Back to the back. Waist lock. Attempted back suplex, but Vatson was too quick for it. A kick to the midsection. Off the rope. Goes for the kick to the head. Cruz catches him. And there it is, Cruz control. Hayes Batson, a little too overconfident, and Cruz caught him. That little bit of experience really telling there for Cruz. And he picked up a quick victory against Batson. Quick was the only way he could do that. He was running out of energy fast. Batson could go all day, but that inexperienced toll. It's Cruz that gets the win. The one, two, three goes to the former new breed member. Putting the boots in afterwards as we see the replay of the cruise control and the three count. Referee Andrew Coy forcing Cruz off, sending him to the back. But it's Cruz with the win. Hey Batson goes home empty-handed. Log on to FrontierWrestling.com for all the latest updates in the FWA. Join in the discussion on the fan forum, find out all the latest news headlines, and see when we're coming to your area next. FrontierWrestling.com The FWA Tag Team Champions, the new breed, former banes of my life when they interrupt my television show with their outdoor green TV. They make their way to the ring. The fans love them. I'm warming to them. I must admit, the way that they've gone around things, they do things right way. They lost their titles. They won it back with a slightly dodgy decision. But since then, they've put things to right. They've done it the correct way. They're worthy FWA Tag Team Champions. And I don't, I'm not the only one who thinks so. The crowd do as well. They're showing their appreciation. Very popular are these boys. So very popular. I'm sure they've got something to say. They'll take the mic off Adam South, our trusty ring announcer. And hand out sartorial advice. Well, I can say one thing straight away, one thing that occurs in my mind. It's really nice to be back here in Action Sticks and flyers, sticks and flyers, it's a sneak attack, turn round, no! Oh, Kerb 
Kevin Ash attacked from behind by the other two of the four boys, Sticks and Pliers. It will be Sticks and Pliers who get into the ring against Ash and Curve, the new breed, in a couple of weeks on this very TV show. And right now, they're signaling their intention to take the FWA Tag Team titles from the new breed. double-team manoeuvre. He's almost unconscious and now it looks like more of the same for Curve. It may be a case of men against boys as Ash and Curve tried to point out but this is one men against boys conflict where the boys have come out on top. by the newest members of the old school. We'll see in a couple of weeks exactly where this one goes as the new breed take on the boys for the FWA Tag Team title. Monkey 
is getting a taste of his own medicine, or rather, a taste of his own bananas here tonight, as Paul Trevell has brought some fruit for him. Hard slow straight in, he's into Paul Trevell's guard, hard fist on the top, but Trevell reversed it, he's in the mount on top of Mark Slow. Again, another reversal, most of this is flying. This one is getting out of control straight away. Referee Andrew Coyne doesn't really know what to do. Mark Sloan does his job for him. Throwing Paul Trevell out of the ring. But no, they still, they're, they're at it again. This is the Donnybrook right from the beginning. This one is out of control, as I thought it would be. So much at stake tonight. The pride of Portsmouth is at stake. Your All England Championship belt. The history, the emotion, the blood feud that centres around Mark Sloan and Paul Trevell is kicking off here tonight in Acton. Double kick to the midsection by Paul Trevell and another. He shakes up for a suplex for Mark Sloan, driving him down the lower back of the specialist, hitting hard on the canvas as Paul Trevell goes in talking some trash to Mark Sloan and a forearm to the face. He's got that arm cranked back now. If he can lean back further, those, those tendons, those sinews in, in the mid portion of Mark Sloan's arm will be really cranking. But Sloan rolls out for a two count. Paul Trevell kicks out. Almost a reversal there, but Sloan too wily for that. Paul Trevell also wily. This is a couple of, of spark, a couple of, of now stop ring veterans here. They know each other so well, and I think we're going to be all the more fortunate for it because this fight is going to go back and forth, back and forth, like a pendulum on a clock. Paul Trevell twisting out. They're trading wrist locks. Mark Sloan attempting to train as well. Sloan's climbing the ropes like they were monkey bars. A monkey flip out of it. A forward flip. Another back flip. He's trying to gain leverage to escape. He fell it all! A nasty kick to the face of Paul Trevell. That caught him on the side of the head where ear meets cheek. And that's going to be ringing now for Paul Trevell. Sloan talking trash to the crowd, but he should be taking advantage of Paul Trevell. He should be on top of the hazardous one if he wants to win this belt. Does he want the belt, or does he just want to hurt Paul Trevell? That's what I'm wondering. Only a two count again, despite the knee in the face on the cover by Sloan. Little tricks like that, you'll notice. Mark Sloan employs. He goes above and beyond the call of duty. He doesn't just want to beat his opponents, he wants to hurt them. He's a nasty monkey. Sloan going up top, taking his time, and he's paid for it because Paul Trevell has appeared. Paul Trevell reversed into a northern like suplex by Mark Sloan. Only a two count again. This is a succession of two counts by the specialist. Paul Trevell kicking out almost on instinct. It's a champion's instinct, but it's a belt that he may not hold for much longer if he continues underestimating Mark Sloan like this, because that's what I think is happening. Paul Trevell, perhaps he's become even a little cocky. Perhaps he's let the monkey chance get to him. But oh, a clever kick by Mark Sloan. And a reversal, a rear heel kick by Sloan, taking Paul Trevell down. Mark Sloan, I, I don't like him, I don't like him one bit. I usually like our Simeon brothers, but not Mark Sloan. But I've got to say, he's got a good game plan here tonight. He's being very smart, he's using his grey matter. And a released German suplex with a boot over the top rope by Mark Sloan. And he's running for a dive. It's a fake, he's fake the dive, and he's earning himself a breather. This is a smart game plan by the specialist. He needs to win this belt. He needs the one, two, three. If he can pull Paul Travel some harm while he's doing it, all the better. But it looks out of the two that Mark Sloan has come to the match better prepared tonight. He knows his opponent very well. Paul Travel knows him too. But I think tonight, Paul Travel hasn't prepared quite as well as Mark Sloan. But maybe I spoke too soon because there's the PT bone suplex by Travel taking Mark Sloan down. But Sloan's up again. 
a backdrop, sending Paul Travell over the top rope to the floor. He caught his head on the barriers, and now Sloan's going to dive over. Another fake by Mark Sloan. This is smart, smart wrestling. A kick, sending Paul Travell back into the barriers. But Mark Sloan's got himself caught up on the ropes. Not he thought better of going to the outside. He's moaning to the ref now for some reason. I have no idea. Sloan in the centre of the ring. He's in control of this one. Paul Travell is really up against it. But he's calling for a test of strength with Mark Sloan. Paul Travell, slightly the bigger man. He's going to try and use that leverage to win a test of strength against the specialist. It's champion against challenger here tonight on Frontier Wrestling. It's the All England division. Our exciting high-flying division and this match has been no exception to that because this match oh northern right suplex out of the test of strength by Paul Travell just as I was saying how exciting this division is how unpredictable Paul Travell comes up with a northern right suplex out of a test of strength a quadrada a moonsault off the middle rope some of you watch the WWE will know it as a lion salt favoured by Chris Jericho here Paul Travell likes to use it it's a quadrada here, he likes to use it for full effect. Will it help him regain his title, retain his title rather, over Mark Sloan? Almost a slip off the top rope, but Travell, champion that he is, manages to recover. A kick to the midsection, attempting whip into the ropes, reversal by Mark Sloan. A back jump attempt by Sloan, Travell catches him, but no, gets sent out to the outside. Once again, it's Mark Sloan catching a breather. It's Paul Travell on the outside, wondering what he's got to do to put the challenger down. Traded forearms leave Paul Travell hanging on the top rope. Mark Sloan trying to ram his head into the top turnbuckle. Gets a taste of his own medicine. Sent reeling as Paul Travell climbs to the top rope. Is this? Is this? It is the Travelator by Paul Travell. Sending Mark Sloan down, but Travell is too tired, too drained to capitalise on it. If he'd have covered Mark Sloan then, perhaps even the loosest of covers, he'd be walking out now, still with his championship belt, but it's up for grabs. It's still anyone's match, as Van Cam catches Gary Hayward on the outside, encouraging Paul Travell. There's a cover, it's only a two count. This one continues. Perhaps it's a good time, while this match is in, a rare lull, to tell you what is in the facts that is settled by the Tour de Montfort. It's settled on my desk in front of me. And before, before the air had, had, had left my mouth, in the gasp, I realised that Tory de Montfort was saying that she'll be here next week on this very television show. Tory de Montfort will be back, a powerbomb by Mark Sloan. A special bomb only gets a two count. Victoria de Montfort, you heard me right, will be here on next week's TV show. She's back and she's got business for the old school. But look, Chris Justice, Mark Sloan's lackey, his minion, is in the ring. A step up moonsault, driving the air out of Paul Travell's body as Justice tries to hide the evidence that he was ever in the ring. Gary Hayward, a little late in my opinion, dealing with Chris Justice. Only a two count from the cover. That would have been rough Justice, rough Chris Justice. And Mark Sloan won the match because of the interference from his cohort. But as it was, it was only a two count. Paul Travell lives to fight another day. A whip into the ropes, reversed by Paul Travell. Into the spine buster, into the spine buster. Cover him, Travell. And there's Gary Hayward leaping off the top of the barrier. He's taken out Chris Justice. I beg your pardon, that wasn't Gary Hayward, that was Roger Ghosh, another of Mark Sloan's students, but he's one of the good guys, he's one of Mark Sloan's renegade students, he hates his teacher, we saw him a couple of weeks ago on this show, in a teacher versus student match, he's taken Chris Justice to the back, Justice is out of the equation, here's the bloodshot splash, it's a miss, Paul Travell has missed with the bloodshot splash, and Mark Sloan is up. Driver driving the head of Paul Travell into the canvas. It's a three-count. Mark Sloan illegally using the 
bloke straight to the leverage. Andrew Coyne didn't notice. Gary Hayward didn't notice either. Perhaps he could have done something about it. There's been a robbery here tonight. There's been a robbery. Mark Sloan is the new All England champion. He's beaten Portobello. And we see here on the retro cam, picture in picture vision, Mark Sloan driver and then making the cover with that extra leverage off the right. Mark Sloan, if you're new, you're always a champion. And Portobello doesn't like it one bit, and I can't say I blame him. He's mad as hell. He's mad. He's mad. We gotta go.